Hi guys, welcome back. Um, it's September and I am finally starting to get some significant tomato har harvests out of the garden. Um, and I want to can as many tomato products as I can this year because that is one of the biggest things that I have to purchase throughout the year. So I want to do as much of that as possible. And I am gonna try a couple new things that I haven't tried before that I am hoping will save me some time and trouble, energy, money. Um, so anyway, I thought I would film it so you guys can follow along and see how it works out and if that's something that would help you out. So one of the big challenges I think um, with canning tomatoes and tomato products, canning in general, um, this time of year during harvest season when we are harvesting all of these things, um, is that that whole process does require a lot of cooking. Obviously there's the actual processing of the tomatoes, but even before you get to that point, before they're in jars, um, traditionally for canning tomatoes, the way that we make it easier to peel them is we dip the fresh tomatoes in boiling water, blanch them, um, and that makes, the, that makes them really easy to peel, which is great, but it does require you to have another pot of boiling water. Um, and then depending on what kind of product you're making, whether it's salsa or something, that sometimes requires cooking. Um, in the case of doing sauce, usually what you do is then cook down the tomatoes for quite a while to eliminate a lot of the excess moisture in it. Um, so usually you cook down like whole or chunked up tomatoes for a while and then you would run them through a food mill or something like that. Um, and then usually at that point you cook them down some more before finally putting the sauce in the jars. And so you can see you ha how you have several different pots of water or tomatoes or your canner going that if you're doing all this inside your house, that's gonna generate a lot of heat at a time of year when we probably don't want any extra heat in our house. I mean, it's 90 degrees here today. Um, it's not bad right now, I'm sitting in the shade, but you know, we'd, we'd, why we don't wanna fight our air conditioning. Um, it just seems really counterproductive during the day. I do have one propane burner outside that I can use for some tasks, but that can be kind of difficult sometimes when you're trying to do some stuff inside and you have this pot going outside that you're trying to kind of keep an eye on and run back and forth. So one day I would love to have a full outdoor kitchen where I can do things like that and some people are fortunate enough to have that and that's great, but it's something that most of us just don't have. So we're trying to do these things in our house and it's creating all this heat, not to mention that uh, that, that costs money. However you're doing that, um, you're either, I'm using propane, I have a propane stove, or you're using electricity, um, and especially this time of year, you're running the air conditioning, you're now fighting <laughs> the air conditioning, so it's running harder, and that costs money. Um, so it can be <clears throat> uh, kind of a big energy drain, both uh, your energy doing all of this extra stuff and and standing in the heat and you know with the energy drain on in a way that costs you money um <clears throat> about the only way that doing stuff like that doesn't really cost extra money is if you're doing it in the winter and it's not winter and you're you know in that case maybe running that extra heat is actually helping you heat your house but that's just not the situation right now so um that's one of the bigger challenges for me is working around that and one of the challenges also for gardeners for those of us who are trying to um preserve the harvest we're getting out of our own gardens especially if you don't have a particularly big garden if you're going out and buying uh bulk tomatoes from somebody and processing those that's a little different and that's fine nothing wrong with that at all i mean i've done that before but if you're trying to preserve what you're getting out of your own garden, quite often we're not getting very big harvests enough at one time to really make it worth doing all that work of processing. Um, you know, I've got what I've got in there right now that I'm going to work on today. If I combined it all, it might make a full canner load of seven quarts. But if I were to cook it all down in the sauce, it definitely wouldn't because that you know, just naturally reduces it some because you're removing some of the liquid. 
um, and tomatoes particularly, there are some things that you can pick and they can kind of sit around for a couple weeks and, and, you know, until you're able to get more of it and do that. But with tomatoes, if they're in really good condition, they have a little bit of a longer shelf life, but quite often we're picking stuff out of the garden that maybe has holes or bad spots or has a little bit of blossom end rot going on. And that's fine because we can cut those parts out, but they are not going to sit on your counter very long before they go bad. You've got, once you pick it, you've got, you know, within a day or two, you better be doing something with it or else they're just going to rot and go bad. So there are a couple ways we can work around those things that I'm going to try and I'm going to show you. And the good news is that it does use an extra piece of equipment, but it's something that most of us already have. You might not have any room in it, but you probably have one. And it's your freezer. I know, I know. Mine's full too. Well, it's less full because I took some stuff out of it specifically for this project. We just got this. And I hate that the shelf does not stay up. I don't know why if it's shorter than it's supposed to be or if there's something else wrong, but it drives me nuts. Anyway, that's what we're doing. So this is what I have to do something with right now. I've got, this is a half bushel basket. So this is about a peck of San Marzano's or uh, that's like, eight quarts I think so two gallons and this is a gallon basket and it's not quite full of regular beef steaks and I'm probably gonna leave one or two of those out just for fresh eating but I've got to do something with these because some of these are in you know perfect shape um and they would be okay for a little while waiting but you know some of them have holes or things like that that just are not going to allow for that so the freezer is going to let me kind of put a pause on those until I have more to work with. Now, not everybody has a lot of freezer space. I am fortunate that I have this fridge freezer and I have another fridge um, down in the garage that we use and I can use the freezer on that and we have a small chest freezer. Now, not everybody has that, I know. Um, so you may or may not have the space, but you know, if you can shift it around to do a little bit of this just to kind of use it as an accumulator so you have more of a batch to work with at one time, you might find it helpful. So I'm actually doing kind of two different versions of the same method here. And one is where you just put a whole dry tomato straight out of the garden like this in a bag, put it in the freezer, and then when you take it out again, you run it under warm water and it makes the skin come off just like it would when you're blanching. And then you can continue with whatever you're going to do with it, make sauce, or in my case, the ones that I do that way. I'm going to try to can either whole or diced. Um, so that's one way for the ones that are really in good shape like this, that don't have holes or anything. They're completely ripe. I think that's what I'm going to try with those. But for the ones that maybe aren't perfect or like this, that just need washed or whatever, I'm going to put them in this bowl and got a hole in it. I'm gonna put it in the bowl, we're gonna wash it, and then I'm going to show you next step on those. Come out of them more easily. Then we're gonna kind of pack them in there. They don't have to be super tight, but might as well be as space efficient as possible. So I'm gonna go ahead and smush them in there pretty good. So obviously I finished filling up the rectangular container and then I went ahead and started on that one. Um, and I've got my bag of poles in there. So 
going to continue doing that for a couple more harvests until I feel like I have enough accumulated to make it worth my while and then we will pull them out and I'll show you how I'm going to process them. All right guys welcome back it's a few weeks later and I have been harvesting and freezing several batches of tomatoes um, and today I am ready to process some of them so last night I pulled all of these containers out of the freezer. I was hoping that they would thaw overnight and be completely thawed by this morning. Spoiler alert, they were not. It's uh, now almost three in the afternoon and they still aren't fully thawed. Um, they're getting close. They're uh, stab all the way through, but they're still kind of frosty. So I'm gonna try to let them hang out a little bit further and I'm still hoping that I can do them this evening. But for right now, I am going to start working on the whole ones. I've also got five gallon bags of the ones that I froze in. So I'm going to start <clears throat> running them under warm water here at the sink and I'm going to let them put them in the bowls and just kind of let them hang out for a while because I want to raw pack them but I want to pack them in their own juices. And if you're not familiar, I don't know if this thing's going to be too loud to hear over, but um, if you're not familiar, what that means is when you uh, pack tomatoes into the jars, you can either kind of put them in loosely and then add additional tomato juice or water until the jar is completely full of liquid, or you can kind of mash the tomatoes in there so that they release their own juices, get like squeezed out of them. So that it fills the jar with liquid that way. And that's the way I prefer to do it. And so to do that, they cannot still be frozen solid like this. So I'm gonna need to let put them over here and let them hang out until they're at least partially thawed. Um, and then hopefully I can uh, go ahead and pack the jars. So just grab the knife too, because I also want to just cut out the stem and any little bad spots there might be while I'm doing this part. But as you can see, that warm water just warms it up and the skin just comes right off of them like that. Just really easy. Definitely beats having to keep a boiling pot of water, so the blanching. Time I've ever done this. It might be smart to like have a few in the basket so they can start falling while I'm working that way. <laughs> Get a little bit more efficient. and they've been sitting for a little while so they are not completely thought all of them but they're pretty squishy especially these first ones I did so um, I washed the jars I'm going to go ahead and start packing them I'm gonna start out with I don't have a ton of wide mouth quartz but I'm gonna use what I do have first because like I said I want to do the packing in their own juices which means you have to be able to get your hand in there to really mash them in well and I can get my hand in a regular mouth, but it's a tight fit, so I'm gonna do the ones that are easiest first. Um, and I'm gonna do start out with seven quarts so I can get a canner going, and then we'll see how many more there are, and then I'll decide what I wanna do next. So, just take them and start packing them in there, kind of mashing them in enough to release the juices, but kind of gently too, because we don't wanna make them completely lose their shape. We're going to bring it up to an inch head space. See, and some of these, um, 
The first ones I picked were all pretty dense, but we've had some really dry weather lately, so some of them are actually kind of hollow. Um, you know, have some kind of air pockets inside, so I want to squish them enough so that I know any of that excess air is coming out, like just there where I squished that one, bubbles came up. Um, that's because of that excess air pockets in there. So I definitely want to make sure I'm getting all that air out. Um, and I'm going to bring it up to an inch head space and I'm not, I'm going to go ahead and fill all the jars first and then I will go through and add my salt after they're all full and put on my lids and get them in the canner. jars in the canner and obviously I still need to add some more water but I just wanted to point out quickly that because the tomatoes that we put in the jars are still very cold it's important that the water we put in it is also cold it's just cold out of the tap so sometimes when we are water bathing something we will already have the water in the canner getting warm while we're packing the jars if what we're putting in the jars is hot but we don't want to ever do that if what you're putting in, if you're putting cold jars into warm water, they will break. Um, so we don't want to do that. We want to have cold water in the canner and I'm also going to turn the heat on very low at first to give every thing time to kind of equalize and come to pressure, or come to, not pressure, temperature slowly. So I'm just gonna have the fire under it really low at first and then once it's started to warm up, I will then go ahead and turn it up and bring it to a boil and then we will start our timer. I, you know, double check, but I believe it's gonna be 85 minutes for these quarts. Yeah, it's 85 minutes for our altitude. I am gonna go ahead and uh, link the NCHFP uh, website in the description uh, to their tomato canning page. So it's got, you know, the charts and everything that will tell you the correct time for your altitude. Um, and also there are different times for if you're hot packing and things like that. So I'll go ahead and link that in the description. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and finish filling this with water and turn it on that low heat so we can get started. So I've still got these orange ones left and I've still got uh, this many of the Sambrazanos. So I decided I'm going to go ahead and dice those up and put them in pints um, while I'm waiting for the other canner to get warmed up. Okay, so I ended up with seven pints of that. I have not added salt or um, I'll probably add citric acid to the orange ones, but I haven't done any of that yet. I'm gonna let them sit for a little bit um, and let them thaw a little bit more so I can debubble them more easily. I do have a few left, but it wasn't enough to do another jar. So um, if I need to top any of these up once I mash them down better, I can do that. And what I don't do will go into dinner. So anyway, I'm going to just let those hang out for a minute and I'm going to get started on the other ones. So the original um, video that I saw doing this, it was actually it was a TikTok or a reel, I don't remember. <laughs> uh, but anyway, in it she showed the first thing we're, I'm going to do actually is drain out the liquid, excess liquid from it. Um, but after that she showed um, blending them before putting them through the food mill. I'm going to try just putting them straight through the food mill. Uh, I'm not sure how it's going to work out so I might end up uh, switching to doing the blender too. Don't know yet but anyway we're going to get started and just see how it goes. So I'm just going to take my bowls that have thawed now. I'm going to kind of hold the tomatoes in and I've got a bowl here by the way. I don't know if it shows up but I'm not just dumping it down the sink. I'm going to reserve this liquid. Um, but I'm just gonna kind of hold those in there and let all that excess liquid run out. So that was the point of the freezing and thawing is the freezing kind of breaks down the cell structure in the tomatoes to allow the liquid to come out when it thaws. So we can remove all of this extra liquid without 
just having to cook it down and let it evaporate. And I'm not sure what the consistency is going to end up being after I mill it. I might still want to cook it down some more, we'll see, but even if I do, it's definitely going to save some time and energy than if I had to cook all of this out. Okay, so now that we've poured off the excess liquid, I'm just going to take handfuls of this pulp and put it through the food mill, and we'll see what the consistency is like at that point. I do think I'm going to grab the blender and try doing it that way, blending it first and then running it through the mill and see if I like that better. I'm gonna go ahead and fill up a couple jars so that I can keep uh, milling some, and then I'm gonna have to wash more jars after that, but I have two that are uh, clean already. Anyway, uh, but I just wanted to show what the consistency is like. Um, so this is, I'm gonna go ahead and can this as is in quart jars. This is about the same consistency that I would expect if I just bought a can of plain tomato sauce from the store, so that's what I'm gonna can this as. If I were, um, if there's any left and I want to make like pizza sauce or something out of it, then I would probably cook it down a little bit to thicken it first. So, but I'm going to go ahead and put this in the jars as is. Okay, the whole ones just got done. I just now set them up so they're gonna sit there for a few minutes and then I will pull them out. Um, and I just got the um, sauce in here. I ended up with six quarts of sauce and then I just did one quart of the that thin juice that I poured off just to fill the canner. Um, I've heard people say that the, they like that for like uh, using the liquid for cooking rice or whatever. So. You know, as long as I've got a spot in the can, I might as well fill it. I've only got seven pints of the diced tomatoes, and I need to top a few of these up with the juice where they've sunk down as a thawed. Um, so I'm going to do that, and I might also do a few more pints of the juice we poured off, again, just to fill the canner. Um, I already added my salt and citric acid to these, so I just got to wipe the rims and put the lids on. As soon as these ones come out of here, I will pour that hot water out because again we got to start with the cold water um, and I will do those in this canner. Uh, I gotta check on the times on those still. I'll have to look up the time for pints of diced. Um, these, the sauce and that juice, I'm gonna... I actually was just gonna use the pressure canner like a water bath canner but then I went and looked at the times and it is gonna save me a little bit of time to actually pressure can them. Um, it's only 20 minutes at, um, five or six pounds and, um, or, uh, or I think it was 15 minutes if you took it up to 11. Anyway, um, whereas if I just did it like a water bath, it would take, uh, I think it was 40 or 45 minutes. So it will save me a little bit of time to do it that way. So I'm going to go ahead because... It is getting kind of late, so hopefully going to get that all wrapped up, and then back behind it here, I just took all of the um, pulp out of the mill after I did the sauce, and put it in there with some onion, and I'll put some other spices and stuff in it, I'm just going to let that cook down for a while, and then I will blend it and put it in the fridge, and then I can reheat it tomorrow, and we'll have some sauce for dinner. Well kind of regret pressure canning the sauce, but oh well. Okay, so we ended up with seven quarts of the whole Sun Marzano's 
five quarts of sauce plus the one that uh, fluid's lit off in the canner. So I'll just, once it's cool enough, I'll stick it in the fridge and I'll just use it within the next few days. Not a big deal. Um, then I got one quart and five pints of that light juice that I canned, plus there's about another half a gallon of it that I put in the fridge. I could have canned it too, but I'm just gonna, again, use it um, within the next week. And then I got seven pints of the diced tomatoes, so not bad, definitely more than I would have gotten trying to do you know, individual small batches every time I picked a few tomatoes, so, um, and you know, the only cooking I did was the processing in the canner. I didn't have to cook the sauce down, I didn't have to boil any water to blanch, so that was definitely helpful. Um, so the freezer is a pretty good tool for that, for helping save some energy there, um, saving some time, and, um, helped us by allowing us to accumulate tomatoes instead of, like I say, trying to process every time I had to pick some. Um, that allows you to um, accumulate a significant amount that you can then, you know, <clears throat> take the time and actually process enough to make it worth your time. And it also, you know, kind of works as a pause button too. Um, you know, all of the, everything in the course of this video happened over the course of a few weeks, but if it weren't for the fact that, well, one, of course, I was trying to make this video, but also I was running out of freezer space. Um, but if you had the freezer space, there is no reason that you couldn't just leave them in there for a while. Um, you know, if you could, if you want to just put all your tomatoes in the freezer, and, you know, you know, this is usually a pretty busy season for most people, so if you want to just put them all in there and you didn't have to get them out of your way right away, you could definitely wait until the middle of winter when things are slowed down, when you don't necessarily mind having the extra heat in your house, and then, you know, process them then. So, um, just a little bit of a resourcefulness there, you know, using something that most of us already have and a little bit of a shift from seeing it as just long-term storage to that we can also use it like this as, as an accumulator, as a pause button, just to help us out a little bit with um, a project like this. Again, also helpful for those of us who are trying to preserve out of our gardens, but we, you know, we might not necessarily have a huge garden where we're getting large harvests that make it worth preserving um, every time we do. So, anyway, thank you guys so much for hanging out with me, and I hope this was helpful. Let me know if you try any of this. Um, you know, a few things I would note, again, uh, when I got the stuff out to thaw it, it did take longer than I expected. Um, if I were to do it again, and I am going to do it again, um, I would, instead of planning on taking 12 hours to thaw, which is what I thought it would be, I would plan on it being more like 24 hours. So, you know, if I was gonna, instead of getting them out in the evening, before to thaw, I'd probably just get them out earlier in the day in the morning to thaw if I was going to try to do it the following morning. Um, but other than that, it worked out uh, more or less how I expected. So, not bad overall. Probably not going to pressure pan any more sauce. <laughs> but anyway, other than that, I thought it worked out pretty well and pretty much like I expected. So, hope it was helpful. It's definitely a helpful um, tip for me, so let me know if you try it, or if you have anything to add in the comments that might be helpful, and, um, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.